Hello and welcome. Uh, this is a look at how to make boats sail faster, which starts with an analysis of capsizing and then goes on to look at other things that slow boats down. And then finally, suggest some ways that boats can be made to sail even faster. I am Colin McCowan, a member of the Northwest of England branch of the Amateur Yacht Research Society. The website for our international organization can be found at www.ayrs.org. That's ayrs.org. Capsize is a very old problem. The Mary Rose sank in 1545 with a great loss of life and embarrassment to King Henry VIII. Capsize is still a current problem. Land Rover, Ben Ainsley Research, capsized in the Solent in 2015, again with plenty of embarrassment. Mankind has been using wind to push boats for thousands of years. But unfortunately, this has also led for a tendency for them to be blown over or capsized. But I must point out at this, I must point out at this point, that sounds like rubbish, doesn't it? Not all sailing boats capsize. Before doing the analysis of why, why boats capsize, I need to point out that many types of sailing boat do not or are ever likely to capsize. But then again, there are branches of sailing where you're almost expected to capsize and should po possibly practice it such as in dinghy sailing, windsurfing, or the international canoe class. A story I was told by an old aunt of mine was that she had always carried buoyancy aids or life jackets in her Canadian canoe. But she found out after being swamped by a, a power speedboat that they're very difficult or nearly impossible to put on when you're in the water. If you do anything near water, or with small boats, put your buoyancy aid on first. People have fallen off jetties and boats even before they have started sailing. Two forces that push a pull, a pull against each other, which, which are not in line, produce what are called turning moments or a turning couple. To offset this capsizing couple, a counter couple is required, and this is provided by the buoyancy and the weight or ballast. The capsizing forces are shown with black arrows, and the anti capsizing forces are shown with white arrows. If one of these forces becomes larger, than the other pair, you tip in one way or the other. And it usually means you get wet. If the horizontal distance between the buoyancy and the ballast can be increased, then the writing moments are also increased. A moment is the leverage that a force has. It is the force times the distance from the fulcrum or turning point. If wires are attached high up on the mast and then attached to the helmsman and the crew's waists, they can then stand on the edge of the boat and hang a long way out. This is called a trapeze or trapezing. By having two hulls parallel with each other but spread apart, as in a catamaran, you increase the stability considerably. But if a capsize does occur, it is much more of a problem. It is extremely difficult to rectify. There are some boats that have a safety float on the top of the mast to stop them totally inverting. Some ocean going catamarans have ballasting water tanks which can be filled or emptied to suit the direction sailed and or the wind strength. 
A lot of large sailing yachts have a heavy lead keel on the bottom, a heavy lead weight on the bottom of the deep keel. A very big advantage of this is that if the boat is capsized or even totally inverted, it is self-righting. A disadvantage of this system is that when the boat is vertical, there are no horizontal distance between the buoyancy and the ballast, and therefore there are no writing moments until the boat is leaning. This is why such boats have to lean at some angle most of the time that they are sailing. Extra stability can be given to monohulls by making the hull wider. This also provides for a flatter bottom, which is suitable for fast planing. A lot of landlubbers, a rather derogatory nautical term for people who don't know much about boats, think that a boat is going to capsize as soon as it starts to sail, as it starts to lean a little bit. But this is not so. Another method of reducing leaning and to increase speed is to have a keel weight that can be canted from side to side using hydraulic rams. Alex Thompson used this system on his boat called Hugo Boss. All weight reduces drag. All weight has to be supported and consequently it will produce some drag. Geoffrey de Havilland proposed a lightweight twin-engined fighter or reconnaissance aircraft made of plywood, the Mosquito. It could be built all over the country in small workshops. Because it had less weight, it had less induced drag. Less drag meant more speed and range and faster and further. No need for a defensive gunner, gun or gun turret because it was too fast to catch. Land and ice yachts have a very good lift drag ratio because they use wheels and, and skis. But using ballast in a boat does not look like the best way to try and go faster. In this illustration, you can see a boat that is leaning or heeling as it is called. And the force from the sail is not only helping to push the boat along, it's also helping to push the boat down into the water, slowing it down. Air traveling over the curved surface on the top of an aeroplane wing produces lift. Whereas water traveling under the curved surface of the bottom of a boat produces suck in down and sometimes even suck under. Fast moving water can pull a person out of a boat if the curve of their back touches the water, literally sucking them out of the boat. I'm sorry, I said all this two slides previously, but it's so important that I thought I should spell it out. So I've uh, written it again here. If air is 800 times lighter than water and 50 times less sticky or viscous, then it makes sense to try and get out of the water. Hydroplaning. By using high speed and a flashage or straight bottom on a boat, it's possible to get it to skim over the surface on a mixture of air and water. This is called hydroplaning or planing. Yellow Pages Endeavour held the world speed sailing record for 11 years from 1993 to 2004 with an official speed of 46.5 knots. Its three hulls were designed to hydroplane on nearly flat water or only small waves. One hull with crew, two crew in it balanced the, wing, the wing's capsizing force. Hydrofoils 
By putting small wings under a boat, hydrofoils, the boat can be made to lift entirely out of the water. This gets rid of the bow wave or wave friction and the wetted surface friction and provides a smoother ride over any waves. In windsurfing, by leaning the sail into the wind, some lift can be got from it. Some more lift is gained by using a small, nearly flat board which hydroplanes over the surface. There is also a lot of aerodynamic drag produced by the surface body traveling sideways through the wind. And also the writing forces are limited by the weight of the pilot or windsurfer. Kite surfers can get so much lift from the wind that they can perform some spectacular jumps up into the sky. But the large jet of water thrown up behind wind surfers and kite surfers, a rooster's tail, suggests to me that a considerable loss of energy is used to lift this water up into the air. An example of super writing leverage or writing moments is shown in the 1975 record holder Crossbow 1, which achieved a speed, a world record speed of 31 knots. This drawing is a summary of all the systems that have been looked at so far. Number seven is Crossbow 1. Number eight is Yellow Pages Endeavour. And number nine is a kite surfer. Number 10 is the current record holder, Sail Rocket. And number 11 is a proposed system where the pilot and the wing are all kept out in the water, out in the air, and only the keel travels through the water. What about totally removing the capsizing forces? If you put the sail force and the keel force directly opposite each other in a straight line so that they are pulling against each other, there are no capsizing forces. When the wind blows stronger, the boat goes faster. When the boat goes faster, it produces still more wind. If this sounds impossible, then the current record holder, speed well, sailing speed record holder, can sail a good faster, good deal faster than the speed of the wind. Think what happens if you squeeze a lemon pip slowly. It can shoot out at a much greater speed than the force you are squeezing it with. This is a drawing showing how the sail force and the keel force can be directly balanced opposite each other. This is me with one of my early prototypes using the principle of a non-capsizing sailing boat. The sail is on the right and the keel is on the left partially deployed. The sail is supported by two surfboards which are self-steering. The frame is made out of aluminium tubes and wire. The author on a later version, the sail is this time supported on two hydroplanes or what were supposed to be hydroplanes. The next, the next slide will show the underneath side of the hydroplane. This is a view of the underside of the hydroplanes. Unfortunately, the step in this hydroplane was insufficient to get the water to break away. So instead of hydroplaning, this float, this float actually sucked, sucked into the water at speed. This principle of the sail force being balanced by a keel force was used in the current world record speed holder called Sail Rocket 2. 
at 65.4 knots. It was invented by Malcolm Barnsley and it is piloted by Paul Larson. And the sponsors are Vestas, a Danish wind, tur wind turbine manufacturing company. This drawing is of a pro proposed development of a super fast sailing technique where a kite and the pilot fly above the water and only a keel, droge, chien de mer or harper travel through the water. Links to other sites. I highly recommend you visiting the World Speed Sailing Record Council. Their web address is the one at the top. If you print off their table of boats, record holders and the captains, you'll be able to then Google the names and you'll be able to see videos and photographs of all these boats. And then below here are some other recommended sites to visit. Right, this is the last slide. If you want to sail faster, or you like boating, designing, making, or testing boats, having fun with people who are interested in boats, you should think about joining us in the Amateur Yacht Research Society. In the northwest of England, we have an enact we have an active branch and we meet regularly for discussions and trips out. Contact details are given below. Check out the Amateur Yacht Research Society website as well. P.S. Very few of us or none of us in the Northwest have a yacht. The emphasis is on amateur and fun. We look forward to hearing about your interests or projects and inquiries. Kind regards, Colin McCowan. I'm going to follow this video up with one with a few more tips of how to sail faster. Bye.